Oh, control your mind, control your life. Think different theory, baby. That's what we do. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Think Different Theory. My name is Josh Forty, and I'm really, really excited for this episode because we're going to be talking about the thing that, honestly, I'm pretty sure it's like this black magic hidden secret of like money and stuff that... I, I don't understand how it all works, and that is credit. But like everybody that I talk to that like actually knows about credit and like how to utilize credit is like it's the coolest thing in the whole freaking world, and you can get a bunch of really awesome stuff on it. I'm pretty sure this episode is definitely not Dave Ramsey approved. So if you're a Dave Ramsey fan, you could probably just tune out now. Um, but uh, I'm really really excited. Uh, we got my man Jack. Is it McCall? McCall? Yes, it is. What's up, Josh? What's up, man? Welcome to Think Different Theory. Thanks so much for coming on here, dude. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. A lot of great things to share. And thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah, dude. Uh, where do you find yourself? I right find now? myself today and this month in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. <sighs> Let me guess. You got there somehow, some way paid for by credit. Exactly. Credit, I mean, credit does everything for me. Credit is the key to success. And so I'm here to share tons of free value with everyone listening today. I love it. I love it. So um, for context, I have this is the first credit interview uh, of, that we've done on Think Different Theory, actually. And so I'm I'm very excited about it, especially with 2020, all the craziness of everything there. Um, I actually, I'm excited for myself to learn here. I have a lot of questions for you. We'll kind of dive in because uh, I have, it, it fluctuates like between like an 802 credit score and like 798, like kind of just kind of fluctuates back and forth, you know, depending upon the month. But like around an 800 credit score. And I've probably had half a dozen people tell me like, do you know what you can do with 800 credit score? And I'm like, I have no idea what I can do with it, right? Um, so I'm super, super excited to talk to you. But I want to back up. How did you, like, how, give us a, like a, a quick background about you. Like, where are you, like, where are you from? How'd you get into the credit space? Like, I know you're in Cabo now. Like, do you have a home base? Give us a little bit of background of how we got here now. Yeah, 100%. So um, I'm, I grew up in Washington, also spent a ton of time in Southern California, studied business at the University of Washington. And ever since graduating college, I kind of just started you know, getting into business. I started multiple different companies. Um, I sold hoverboards um, I, that got extremely popular. That was my first six-figure business was selling hoverboards. Um, the second six-figure business was the inflatable loungers that you see at music festivals. Oh, really yeah. Companies to ever sell those in the United States. And so after I kind of had saw some success in business, I was like, wow, I need to continue business. Like, this is the best thing ever. And um, I started to realize the more money I had to work in the business, the more money I could make in the business. And mm. so that's why we started using credit cards and just like, you know, kind of trying to learn about, you know, how to get approved to borrow more money, specifically low interest money. Um, that kind of brought me into my, my next business, which was a travel company. So uh, funny enough, I actually uh, organized Cabo Spring Break Trips. Uh, for university oh, students, crazy. and so that's you know one of the reasons why I love Cabo so much is you know through, through that business. And one of the make or breaks um, in that business was getting a, a low interest loan for fifty thousand dollars to use to get a massive block of uh, room inventory here, actually at the Mi Cabo, one of the nicest hotels in Cabo. And um, within about two and a half years, we actually sold the business, my brother and I, to the industry leader in student travel. Um, at a six figure acquisition. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations. Amazing. Okay. But you said something that is seemingly contradictory, which is I leverage credit cards because I want access to low interest money. I'm like, I'm, my brain is going, I'm sitting here Boom. going, <laughs> I know I'm like kind of mind blown here. Cause I look what at, does that mean? I never, ever, 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 ever in my high, whole life have ever carried a balance on a credit card. I don't know if that's your thing or not. Because I look at that interest and I'm like 16%, 18%, 27%, you know, on some of those credit cards, like that doesn't seem like, like a low interest to me. So like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So great question, Josh. I'm glad you asked. So on most credit cards, there's an introductory period where the, in that introductory period, it's 0% interest. Mm. Some credit cards as, are as low as six months. Others are nine. Most are 12 months. Yeah. Some like US Bank, for example, go to 18 months. So if you get, for example, a $20,000 credit card at US Bank, uh, the 0% one, you can use that money freely and don't pay any interest for the first 18 months. So the goal with that is to spend that money uh, into different investments or business opportunities that make you an ROI before you owe any interest. And so that's mm. why I typically teach people on how to get approved for these top 0% interest business cards 
Um, so they can use that money in their business, make an ROI before they owe any interest whatsoever. And then even if you can't pay that in, pay the, pay the money back before you owe interest in that introductory period, you can then get another business card and balance transfer the debt to another card um, at only a 3% That's fee wild. and then it's 0% for another 12 to 18 months. So you can get 0% money up to five years through strategic business cards. That's okay. Okay. My mind is already blown. We're like two minutes into this interview. Okay. So are we talking, are these personal credit cards? Like, are you personally backing them? Yes. Or is so, it an actual business card, like to a business account? Great question. So you do need a bit, you do need like a, a, an entity, an LLC or a corporation to get a business credit card. Yeah. Uh, until you establish corporate credit, you have to personally guarantee the money. It's called PGing the money. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so like, you know, most people are PGing the money until you can establish a corporate credit profile. Um, right. And so, yeah, it's so like mo most of the money I'm borrowing right now is personally guaranteed. Um, but until I, you know, get enough trade lines onto my corporate credit profile. Because like, yeah, because like I have, I don't think, I, th I think I have, like I'm trying to think of every credit card that I have possibly ever had. I think I maybe have eight, right? Like I think I have a Discover card that I never, ever, ever use. I have my Amex, like business card, which is, you know, personally guaranteed or whatever, right? And like, that's everything for, for business. And then I have like two personal credit cards, maybe three, I guess I got an Apple card. So like three or four, and I probably have an American Airlines card or something like that. But like, I... I never use any of them. I never do anything with it, right? And I get offers all the time for credit cards, right? Like every place I go, it's like instantly approved. Right? I have an 800, almost an 800 credit score. But I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with them. Like, I, I have no idea like what it is that I'm doing here. So this is very fascinating because I think a lot of people, I know the misconception for me going into this, and maybe this isn't a misconception for a lot of people, was that business credit cards, like you had to have like at least two years like two years in business, like if you go to PayPal to go get a loan, right? For example, right? Like you got to be in business for two years and you got to prove bank records and statements and everything like that. Like you're not going through that process. You're literally going through and based off of your credit score. And I guess you'll tell us what other factors getting approved on a credit card. So they're not actually, it's not like a loan in the sense of they're not giving you $25,000, let's say up front, but you can go apply for a credit card that has a zero interest balance to where I can, it's not like money up front, but I could spend the money and not have to pay interest on it for X number of months. Yeah, 100%. So instead of like, you know, applying for like a loan, kind of like the traditional way, the only thing they're looking at when you apply for a business credit card is a couple things. So, you know, one, what's the business type? What's the okay. revenue, estimated revenue? What is your relationship with that bank? And then what does your personal credit look like? So there's a big difference between personal credit and the business credit. So okay. business credit cards, they don't report to your personal credit, which makes oh. it a game changer. So you can actually use that money, keep a high balance, and it won't affect your utilization on your personal credit. My mind right? is blown right, right now. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give the listeners an example. If you had a $20,000 personal card and you were using all of that money and leaving a balance, even if it was 0%, that would be 100% utilization and it would negatively affect your credit score drastically. Huge. But if you have that a 0% interest business card at $20,000, you can actually use that full $20,000, leave a balance the entire year, and it won't report that utilization to your personal credit, so your score stays unaffected. And so this is exactly how I've been approved for over $300,000 in credit limits just in the last year while maintaining an 805 plus FICO score across all three bureaus. That's wild. Yeah. So, so I, I essentially, I'm backing it with my personal money or my, per, my personal, and they're initially, like if I were to go to apply for a business credit card, they would sit down and they'd be like, okay, let's show us your business. How much money you, are you making slash projected to make this year moving forward? Right. Uh, are, I have a question on that, but let me come back to that. And then they look at your personal credit score. Cause when they initially do it, they are looking at that. Right. And then based on that, they're saying, sweet, sounds good. We'll approve you for, I imagine that depending upon your credit score and your business, that determines the limit that you're amount, allowed to get, right? It does. And so, okay. so the personal credit file is incredibly important. Also, the relationship you have with that bank. So I'll expand on both real quick. But with the relationship, you want to have things like you want a business checking account open 
at each of the banks you apply for a business card at. And the more cash you have in that account that's sitting for longer, um, the more you know beneficial it is for, for mm. yourself to get a higher limit because it shows you're liquid. It shows you want to build a relationship. And the you know the longer account, the longer time that account is open, it shows like you're, you're a more loyal customer to that bank. It helps mm. build trust. And then on the personal credit, because those business cards don't report, you have to get very strategic personal cards um, throughout throughout your history to you know basically create a, a thick file. So you can't just have a good score because some people have one or two cards and have like an 800 credit score, but because they have a very thin file, they won't get approved for some of the best business cards. So it's best to have at least four primary accounts on the personal side before getting business cards. Credit credit line accounts of some exactly. sort. Exactly. Yeah, so any 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 credit cards, you know, also um, auto loans help, a mortgage help. For anyone younger, they probably don't have a mortgage, but auto loans help um, as well. And then with the personal cards, you actually can't get a, you can't apply for too many in a short period of time, which I'll expand in a second. On the business side, you can get like 10 in a day, but on the personal side, it's it looks risky if you're doing more than two or three in a six month window. Okay, like you need at least four or five before going to the business side. So that's why it's so important to start when you're 18, you know, 20 years old, and you'll get a card every two to three months, um, and start with the low tier cards first, and then work yourself up. So like I have on the personal side of things, I have like a Chase Sapphire card, right? I yeah. have uh, a uh amex platinum like the silver like that one i have um uh like it's not a bad thing to tell people what credit cards i have right like i'm not at any risk right i got an apple card i have an amazon card and i think i have a delta gold i probably have a couple other ones like that's five right and I utilize credit, uh, I utilize that pretty regularly. I mean, I rack up. So like I use my Amex card for like all business transactions, right? And it's just like exclusive. I mean, I rack up oh, so much money on that every month, right? Like tens of thousands of dollars some months. So like I have really, and I have a, I have a lease, right? Like I lease my Jeep. So I've got a, a car loan, if you will. I, know, I mean, I know it's a lease, but like same, same concept here. So like that's yeah. like five or six lines right there. That's five or six. We're good. So that's good. That's really good. So okay. another thing that you want to consider is, you know, what do your current limits look like on the personal side? The higher personal limits you have, the more it validates you with the banks to give you more money on the business side. So if all your limits, you know, it's probably not the case, but if they're only like 200 bucks, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, you know, that's, what's that's like an important. average limit. Um, it really depends. Um, you know, okay, I think let me rephrase that. What's a good, like, if you're looking for someone and you're like, you want to have at least X, What's that? So um, on each card, you want to have anywhere between five and twenty thousand dollars. I'd say that's a good limit. Anything under five is uh, considered a low limit. But yeah. there are strategies on how to increase your limits on the personal side. Some banks require um, a hard inquiry when you request for a credit line increase, like Chase and U.S. Bank will, which will negatively affect your credit score just a little bit. But other banks like Bank of America, Amex, Citi, Discover, Capital One, you can just call them and ask for a limit. And they'll give it to you without doing a hard inquiry. Dang, why does Chase suck? I just switched. So I, I was banking at Wells Fargo and I hate Wells Fargo. I hate them so much. They're so annoying. Um, but where I live, hopefully you don't like love them or something. I don't. Um, They're actually low tier. They suck. Anyway, where I live, I used to live in Omaha. And that was like the only major bank. They don't even have Chase banks in Omaha. Like not a single, not even an ATM. It's terrible. So like I had to bank with them because I lived in Omaha, but then I moved to Colorado and there's Chase banks everywhere. I'm like, sweet. So I just switched over to Chase and I love Chase, but it sounds like Chase isn't the bank either. The thing is like with Chase, they have so many amazing cards and the reward system is so awesome that getting those hard inquiries are actually worth it. And even okay. when you apply for credit cards, they'll actually pull from two bureaus instead of one, which Wells Fargo does as well. But for Chase, it's actually worth it because they have the best reward system. Got it. So I want to go back really quick. So when, when you are applying for the business card, they're looking at like, you know, utilization or things like that. When they are, when you're applying for a business card, does like length of, that the business has been open matter? Yes, it does matter. So the more age, the better. Um, if it's a brand new business within you know one to six months, that's going to affect the amount of approvals and the limits you're going to receive. But if you have an LLC that has more age and more revenue, you want to use that LLC to apply for cards as opposed mm. to one you just start. 
Even if Got you it. want to use the money on the newer business, you should apply for the cards on the older LLC with more revenue. Older, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, actually. Huh, okay, okay. So, like, what are some of the best... Like, do you have... We could go two ways with this conversation. You tell me which one makes more sense. Obviously, the question of what are the best credit cards and the best bonuses has to come up. This would not be a credit card conversation unless we answered that question, of course. But like maybe there's some context around like do you have like a framework or, or a process that you go through in like determining, okay, like if we do this, there's a three-step process. First we do this, then we do this, then we apply for the card. Or like, is there a process there? Or like where do, where does one start? And if they're like, all right. This sounds awesome. I need 20 grand because I'm going to, you know, go, go through and do, you know, a business venture of some sort, right? I want to put $20,000 to Facebook ads. I want 0% interest on this. Where do, where does one begin that process? Yeah, hundred percent. Great question. So the first step is going to be optimizing your personal credit. This is getting your utilization under 30%, ideally okay. under 10% on every single account, getting your limits up and then understanding where exactly you are. You are. So checking your, your credit score on all three bureaus, just to understand what your scores look like, uh, make sure you have no derogatory marks. And if you do have derogatory marks, you have to get those removed through the credit repair process. Well, like what's a, can I like look at my credit score right now? Yeah, go to like experian.com, creditkarma.com for free. Um, what's the easiest know? one? What was that? It's the easiest one. Experian.com. Experian. Yeah, so at least Check under credit report for free. Perfect. Perfect. No credit card needed. Sounds good. Let's go. So I just like put in my information here. Hit 100%. Hit yeah. Account. All right, we're going to do this. You can keep talking, but I'm going to do this over it. So cool. continue with the process. Yeah. And so once you understand you know, where you're at, what your score is, what accounts you have, what limits you have, do you have any derogatory marks like late payments, charge offs, collections, things like that? Um, also, too many hard inquiries. If you have over two, hard inquiries in the last six months, you're gonna to want to get those removed or just wait until they fall out of that six month window. Then it kind of comes down to the strategy part, you know, like what cards to apply for, when to apply for them and how to apply for them. And when I think about personal cards, I always, I always think about, you know, what banks do I wanna create a relationship with? Because if you have a, a relationship with them on the personal credit side, they're going to give you more money on the business side. Mm, for the bank specifically. 100%. So if the bank doesn't have a good 0% interest business credit card, I won't open an account there and I won't get a personal credit card there. Got it. So like I do all my banking with Chase, both personal and business. Chase is the best. Chase is the best. Amex is also the best. They're not actually like a bank, but they have the best card products. So it, making a relationship with Chase is a game changer. I think everyone should do banking at Chase. I, I believe they're the best. Um, Wells Fargo, I would wouldn't personally recommend creating a relationship with. And then if you if you're trying to create a relationship with any like the smaller regional banks in your city or state, do the research and see if they have a good zero percent interest business credit card. And if they do, then I think it's worth to you know open up an account there, maybe get a personal card there, and start building that relationship. But if they don't have any zero percent interest business cards, then I personally wouldn't uh, pursue a relationship with them. Got it. So, um, oh gosh. So I'm going through here. I was born within one year or on the year. Out. Boom. So I'm going through like a couple steps, a couple steps here. It says I opened mortgage. I don't know what I did. Holy cow. Um, primary check. So also another key. Um, once you have your personal credit file dialed in with multiple, you know, four, four to six accounts, low utilization, low hard inquiries, good relationships. Um, you can even, you can get approved for 10 business cards in the same day. And that's because they don't report to your personal credit. And so you, you can't get um, that many personal cards in, in one day because they'll report to your personal credit. So with the business cards, assuming you have the, you know, the right relationships and you apply all in the same day, you can get a lot approved um, on the business side. All right, I think we're here, let's see. Uh, I created my account, I put in all my information. I have a 797. That's good. Today. And that's Experian too. So if anyone- I have a 0% credit usage. That's good. So, no <laughs> so I'm set. You're, you're good. So how I can go get a bunch of credit cards. You said you have like four to six accounts? Uh, eight, it says apparently. That's that's good. Some of them might be closed. Um, you, sometimes you have to expand the window. But, well, it oh, says open. Another, 
It says okay. eight open accounts. Good. Also, another big point for anyone listening is you never want to close credit card accounts. When you close one, it's just deleting all of the, the successful payment history from your record. So you want to keep them open. And even if you have a card that has uh, an annual fee that you don't want to pay, you just want to ask them to downgrade you to the free version. But you never want to close. Got it. Okay. Um, so are the three, wait a minute, hold on. I have a question on that, but I want to do this. So are the three major ones, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax? Exactly. Those are the three ones. Yeah. It says I can upgrade for $25 a month and I can get the report on all of them. Man, yeah. it's got to upsell so me right there. The first step to, to like understand where you're at is pay to check your credit. Um, you know, check all three bureaus because okay. each bank, when you apply for a card, they'll pull from a different bureau. So it's super important to, to know all of them, all three bureaus, just to know where you are. Cause if, if you don't know where you are, then, you know, you're kind of shooting blind. But like, why are, why are, um, the, why are they different? Uh, I don't know why there's three, but there is three and each bank's pull from uh, a different bureau. I think it's just, you know, they're competitive. It's huh. just interesting you know, there's options so out there. Okay, so let's go back to this. You never want to close a credit card line. I get it in theory, right? But like, what if it has like a hundred dollar a month or a hundred dollar a year annual fee or a five hundred dollar annual fee? So generally the benefits will outweigh the cost. But if you don't want to pay for it and you don't see the benefits, just ask them to downgrade you and they'll downgrade you to a, a free card that they have. And it will keep all that history and keep the limit. No way. You can do that. Yeah, so that's the move. You never want to close. So I can go and let's say, I, I think American Express or, or uh, yeah, the Delta Airlines, like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. They also have a free version of it. So you mean to tell me I can go to them and just be like, hey, I want you to just downgrade my card. I don't want to pay the fee anymore. And they'll just downgrade me to a different card. Yeah, exactly. Another tip, you know, if, if you're getting to your second year and you were just charged your, um, your annual fee, you can do something uh, and ask for a retention offer. So you give them a call, you let them know like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about closing this card. I, I'm not looking to pay the annual fee. You know, is there anything you guys can do for me, um, you know, to help incentivize me uh, to keep this card? And are there any retention offers? And sometimes they'll give you points. Sometimes they'll waive it. Sometimes they'll throw some other stuff in there, but always That's ask. That's amazing. So y you don't want to close uh, accounts down because number one, it takes a negative impact on your credit score, right? If yes. You close account. Yeah. And it, 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 it's mainly negative because it removes the payment history from your credit. So it doesn't actually, actually, you know, it, it does hurt it because now you have less accounts. It just makes you weaker. Got it. Okay. So I want to go and, because my big thing is why would I keep a credit card? And maybe you can answer this. I mean, you got how many credit cards? I have like so many. Like, all... yeah, there's zero, there's no way you're spending money on all those cards all the time, right? I'm spending on most of them. But one thing you want to do, even if you have cards that you don't use much or at all, you want to add you, you there's a there's a benefit from spending money on each of the cards because that adds to your payment history. And so a payment mm -hmm. history is the biggest part of your credit score, it's 35%. So the mm -hmm. more on-time payments you have over time, the the stronger that section is going to be and the less volatile your score is going to be. So even if you have, you know, 10 credit cards, you only use one, you know, add a subscription and put it on auto pay for each of the cards. So you know, put like uh, you know, um, YouTube, Hulu, any of your other subscriptions, you know, put one on each card and let it auto pay every single month. Cause then you're getting, you know, 10 successful payments every single, every single month, which is huge. So after, let's say I apply for a card, it has 0% interest. I put 25 grand on it for the year. I pay it off. I have a zero balance at the end. So I paid no interest. I just got $25,000 in free money, essentially. Right. Well, interest free money. Um, is there any benefits outside of what we just talked about, like the, the payment history, like of like keeping the cards longer than that. Like, dude, year two bonuses kick in or cause like, to me, it's like once, once that initial 12 month or 18 month period of zero, zero percent, like, you know, credit is gone. Like it's nice that I have the card because it adds to my history and I can, you know, do auto payments for it. But is there any other benefit of that? The only other benefit is using it on a revolving basis. So basically spending and then paying it off every month. Cause after that introductory period, 0%, then if you leave a balance after a month, you have to pay interest. So you can just use yeah. it as like a revolving monthly card. But at that point you should just be applying for more 0% cards. Got it. What's the, um, like when you are utilizing point, cause I imagine there's essentially two benefits. There's 
the benefit of the first you know, six, 12 or 18 months of interest free to where I can spend a crap ton of money without having to pay interest on it, which for those of you that are not in business or, or like are in business, but like don't utilize loans or credits at all, this might not seem that all that great to you. But like, once you understand how money works and how like, if you just have more capital to deploy, like most people have to pay for money, right? Money's a product. They're literally giving it to you for free. So like you have interest-free money that's not yours that you can go spend and make ROI on. If you take a loan out on a house, you're paying 5%, 10%, like whatever it is over the course of 30 years. Imagine taking all that interest away for 12 months. Like you're literally getting free money to spend. And as long as you give it back, it's just free access to it. So that's pretty amazing. Um, 100%. And real quick, Josh, I'm such a big advocate of using money you can borrow in business credit to invest in your business and then using your personal savings for long-term investments, like the stock market, cryptocurrency, real estate, you know, investments that are much longer term because you can borrow money through the credit cards at a 12 month to 18 month introductory period, 0%. So assuming your business can create an ROI in that time frame, for sure. That, that's why I think you should use it there. Okay. So I, I, man, I have another question about that, but I want to go back to this here real quick. So the, the two inherent benefits of this really are A, 0% interest and B, points. Is that correct? Yeah. So if I go and I spend $25,000 in interest-free money, I've just, I got $25,000 in interest-free free money, right? I also get at least 25,000 points. Maybe there's bonuses on that or whatever, right? Where do you most utilize points? Is it, like vacation and cash back, or like, or I'm sorry, vacation and travel? Is it hotels? Is it cash back? Is it like, where, where's the highest value ROI or where are, cause like for, for a lot of people, they're going to be interested in the cash back. Some people are going to be like, I don't care about the, the bonuses. I don't care about like the points. I just want interest free money. But for most people that are getting into these, this credit card stuff, they're like, heck yeah, if I can go and I can get amazing points and bonuses and rewards back, I want to utilize that. So like primarily, what are you and the people that you work with using these points back for? Great question. So on the cards, there's two different options of cards. Some of the Amex cards have uh, a percentage of cash back that immediately hits your, state, hit, hits your statement as a credit. And there's other cards that give you the points. Like most Chase cards, they give you the points. And then if you have the right personal cards, you can actually transfer the points to the personal card and redeem them for cash back with a 50% bonus. So let me give you an example, two examples, one on Chase, one on Amex. So at Chase, if I have a business card that's generating you know, hundreds of thousands of points a month, say it's for an e-commerce store, then you can move those points from that Chase business card to your Chase Sapphire Reserve. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a feature called the pay yourself back feature. So you can turn those points into a statement credit with the 50% bonus. So 100,000 points at a one cent to one point ratio is worth $1,000. But when you get that 50% bonus with this feature, it's actually worth $1,500. So you're getting a free $500 on those points if you're able to redeem it through the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. That's just so wild. So, so you're you just have, multiplying you have, about, you have to think about pairing up the cards. So the Chase Sapphire Reserve is the best uh, personal chase card, you can either use it, use those points for travel and get that 50% bonus, or you can do the pay yourself back feature and still get that 50% bonus. And then on the Amex side, there's something similar. You can transfer your points through the American Express Platinum Charles Schwab edition and move those points into your Charles Schwab investment account at a 25% bonus. So I could go and I could spend $100,000 on an interest-free credit card, hypothetically, through the Charles Schwab Amex, have an interest-free, I don't know, let's say it's 12 months, interest-free for 12 months, spend 100 grand, take those $100,000, that 100,000 or 100,000 points, transfer that back to, like redeem it as on a dollar for dollar or a dollar per 100 points ratio, giving me a thousand bucks, plus redeem it at the 25, point credit. So I could get $100,000 in interest-free money plus $1,250 in additional cash at, in bonuses back, put into an investment account to go invest in the stock market. 100%. Yeah. And I'll give you another example on how I use a card in business and then use those points to turn into cash back. So my Chase Freedom Unlimited 
has like a fifty thousand dollar limit. I use it for my e-commerce store, and it it's a, it it gives you one point five x on everything spent. So I spend fifty thousand dollars in one month. That turns into seven uh, uh, seventy five k points, and then I use the Chase Sapphire Reserve Pay Yourself Back feature to get a fifty percent bonus, and that right there turns into over a thousand dollars in cash back on one card in one month. So do that on the one card for the full year. That's like 14 grand of pure cash back, not even doing anything, 14 grand. As long as you're spending that kind of cash in your business. Exactly. So I think like, you know, you want to have a business that's cranking cash, specifically e-commerce. If you're in e-commerce, you need the credit. You need the right cards because you're, you're if you don't have the right cards, you're just leaving money on the table. Yeah, no kidding. Because you're like, you're spending that much for him. I mean, like you have to pay for the inventory regardless. Like you got to buy the product. You got to buy advertising. Like you're spending the money anyway. Yeah, you're spending it regardless. So you might as well have the best cards. And even if you're like you're spending on ads, that you want to have the best ad card at Chase, which is the Chase Business Inc. Preferred, and then link that card with the reserve, do that whole bonus thing we just talked about. And then on the Amex side, you want to have the, the business gold and then pair that up with the personal American Express Platinum Schwab and get that 25% bonus. So... All right, let's talk cards. Like top top five credit cards, five or six or three, like you tell me, top rough five, roughly five cards that every business owner should have that you think. Yeah, so the Biz Inc. Cash. So this is Chase. The Chase Biz Inc. Cash. The Chase Biz Inc. Unlimited. Those are the two awesome 0% interest Chase cards. And then on Amex, there's the business blue cash, which is also a 0% card. And then Amex also has something called a charge card. So like the American Express business gold or the business platinum is a charge card. And so what that means is there's no preset spending limit. It's not like 20K limit stuck at 20. That's what I have, yeah. Which with, which, with the 0% cards, you get a preset spending limit, but on the charge cards, you actually, you get, it's called spending power. So the first month might be $2,500 in spending power. Once you, once you spend it, pay it off, then it's gonna go up to maybe $5,000. And the more, you, the more you spend and more, the more you pay it off, the higher that spending power gets. And so I have like a gold, a platinum, and each of these like basically at almost at $100,000 on each of these cards based on how much I've spent and paid it off. And so yeah. if you have a commerce store or any business that's, you know has awesome growth and that you're spending a lot in, these are the best cards to get, the MX Biz Gold, and Biz Platinum because they can scale with your store. But like those don't have 0% interest on them. They don't. So, so I, like to, I like to get these cards as well as the 0% cards. So then, yeah, cause I remember, I, I don't remember where you can like check your spending thing on the app, but I know you can. And like, I know mine's up there cause I spend so much stupid money on uh, for the business every month on it. Like, I, I mean, I have hundreds of thousands every year. I get hundreds of thousands of points on that card. And I like just get free flights and hotels and stuff. But Good. I don't, I mean, that's just, just that's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just, they show up there and I'm like, sweet. There's a, an offer that came through uh, yesterday at, for Hilton. If you transferred, it was a one point turns into 2.8 points. That's great. That's great. For, for Hilton. I was like, I just got like three free ho hotel night stays for like 20,000 points. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Anyway. So we got Business Inc. Cash from Chase, Business Inc. Unlimited from Chase, Business Blue Cash from Amex, and then Business Gold slash Gold or Platinum from Amex as well. Yeah, perfect. And then also like the Bank of America Business Advantage Cash Rewards. So B of A Business Advantage Cash. And then the US Bank Platinum is a 0% card. Hey, what was that one? The US Bank Business Platinum. Sometimes it's, it's kind of fine. It's kind of hard to find good zero percent business cards, but Google them. You know, Google and see what banks have zero percent business cards specifically for the longest amount of introductory period. Who's Some got the longest? Banks, you think? Um, U.S. Bank has the longest eighteen months. Chase has twelve months. Bank of America nine months. Key Bank six months. It's just crazy that you're getting that kind of money. I mean, like, I know all like all of my limits are enough to where like I could spend some serious cash at zero percent. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think 
I think last time I checked, I could spend close to hundred grand on my Amex. Like just Good. approved. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to think if I were to drop a hundred grand on something and it's interest free for 12 months, that's crazy. I didn't yeah. realize that it was like, going. and basically once that money, once the introductory period runs out, then you just get more cards. Okay. That's okay. So let's talk about that. I spend 50 grand on a card and halfway through, you know, 12 months, 12 months is up. I paid off 25,000 of it. Right. Or whatever. You tell me the amount, but I have a balance left over 10 grand, 20 grand or whatever. You're telling me, like, how, how does that process work? I could just transfer that to a new card? 100%. And you mainly can do that if it's from business card to business card. So okay. basically, if you have the debt on a personal card and your utilization is super high, you're not going to be able to apply for new cards. So that's why it's so important to build your personal credit, get the business cards, then spend the money on the business card side. Because if you get in a position where you can't pay all of it back, because that utilization does not affect your personal credit, you can apply for a different business card that does balance transfers, balance transfer the debt. Usually it's between a zero and 3% balance transfer one-time fee. And then once the debt is over to the new card, then you have 0% interest for another six to 18 months. And you could do that for technically up to five years, hypothetically speaking. Yeah, you can do it two transfers. So with strategic cards, you can do it five years basically. Um, yeah, if you did 18 months and 18 months, dang. So anybody that's looking to get cash for their business that doesn't need le legit cash. Like if you need like cash for payroll and you're not paying on a credit card, it's not going to work. Cause I imagine, I mean, did it, I imagine it actually does work. So there, there's no ways, freaking way. there's ways to pull the cash out of the card. There's different websites that, that do it. You can do it through different merchant processors. Um, like, you know, PayPal, Venmo, you can do PayPal, Venmo on small amounts. You have to be more careful, but if you know someone with a payment processor, you can process large payments. Um, but you just have to be, you know, you have to be, be mindful of what you're doing. Um, and then, um, also it just takes 3%. Obviously there's the credit card fee from running a, running a payment. So they'll take 3%, but it turns cash for you. Yeah. Because like, I mean, rerun stuff through Stripe. So I guess hypothetically speaking, I could just run a credit card through my own merchant account. So you actually can do that, but what you can do, this I is- I cannot, that's illegal? Uh, it's not illegal, but Stripe will just flag you for it. But what you can mm -hmm. do, um, this is some secret sauce, you can add someone else as an authorized user to that same credit card. So it's a different name and different address with that card, which is essentially the same account as yours because you're paying for it. They're just an authorized user. Um, you can run that card through it. But why can't I just do it myself? Is because of the address? The address and the name. Okay, so this thing, because I'm like, my business address is different than my personal address. I still think the, the same name will flag. The name will, will flag it. That makes sense, actually. That's yeah. crazy. So there's all sorts of stuff. How'd you learn all this, dude? How old are you? 27. All right, so I'm 20. I'm going to be 27 February 1st. So I'm like 20. How'd you, when did you start with this? How old were you? Um, I mean, probably like five years ago, I, I, got, I went hard on credit cards. Uh, tons of research, tons of trial and error you know, talking with, you know, older successful people, you know, how do you get so many credit cards? What about these cards? You know, asking tons of questions, trial and error, creating a relationship with, uh, I haven't even talked about this yet, but I have relationship managers at all of the top banks. And basically they help me out with card applications for me and my clients. And so I definitely get some good um, kind of like insider information from these high level bankers essentially. And they kind of inform me on, you know, what the banks are specifically looking for. And then in my credit consulting company, you know, I coach people on exactly these things on how to optimize their personal credit, essentially making them, them their credit file attractive to these lenders. Because the, the more attractive you look to the banks, the more money they're going to want to lend to you. And that's their job. That's why they're a bank. They want to lend money. You just have to make yourself look attractive to them and look low risk. And so that's what I do in my consulting company. I make people look attractive to banks, make them look low risk. And then that's why they get so, approved for so much money. Got it. Okay, I have two questions. One, you ever screwed yourself over by spending more than and didn't make the money back? Or you've been smart? I've been smart. Okay. And I, feel like that's, I feel like that's a legitimate thing. Yeah, a lot of people ask, like, you know, I'm, I'm scared to use the credit cards because, you know, I could just use my own money instead. But that it's so contradictory because if you use your own money and it's gone, it's literally gone forever. When you're using the business credit, it gives you options because you can then balance transfer the debt and have that 0% interest for up to five years. And then worst case scenario, if you still can't pay it back, it goes to collections and then you can hire a credit repair specialist 
and they can remove the debt from your credit file. Obviously, that's worst case scenario. You don't want to do that. You want to pay your bills back on time. But there are very good credit repair specialists that specialize in removing debt from your personal credit file. So that's that's the worst personal credit there. file. Yeah. So so the, the business cards don't report to your personal credit unless there's late payments and unless there's collections. Then they act, they get out. Okay. So basically, if you did get screwed and you had to go to one of those people that wiped the debt, your credit score would be completely screwed. It it, it would be dampered. You you would have a collection on there. Um, it's it's a pretty it's uh, I mean there's rules there's um there's laws in place that protect the consumers in the country. You know we have the best credit system in the entire world by 10x. Um, and there's there are also rules that that are laws that protect the consumers. And so by law, these credit repair specialists do things that can get the debt removed um, from, from your file. And basically the reason they can do that is because the original lender sells your debt to a collection agency. You never originally had the debt with the with the agency. You had I, a, I did know that. And so and one, tip, go ahead. if anyone has any money that is in that was sold to a collection agency, even if you pay it back, it will still report on your credit. And so it actually doesn't help you to pay the collection agency unless you get an agreement with them that says you will pay it if they delete it from your credit file. Oftentimes they won't delete it, but if you have a very clear agreement with them <laughs> that if you pay, they'll delete it, then that's the only time that it would help you to pay that collection agency. So hypothetically, and like, I'm not actually encouraging this. I'm I'm simply asking a hypothetical. Hypothetically. Educational purposes only. Huh? Educational purposes only. Educational purposes only. I just want to make sure I'm understanding the system here. If somebody has student debt, which I didn't go to college, I went for one semester, paid cash for it, like whatever, right? But if I had like 40 grand in student debt, hypothetically speaking, I could go get a credit card, pay off the student loan on a credit card, default on it and get it wiped hypothetically hypothetically you wouldn't even need the credit card and hypothetically for educational purpose only you can go work with a credit repair specialist and get the student debt removed from your file i'm What's not <laughs> i know you're I'm not, not i'm not a credit repair specialist but i do have partners that are and what's the downside of doing that it's just I mean, that you're you're screwed. You're you're for a minute on your credit reports and stuff. No one's gonna lend you any money. Exactly. It's it's a very short period of time. But you know the the people you know that I work with specifically, they they're really good at what they do, and there's specific strategies they have to essentially dispute the debt with the bureaus. Um, and if they basically if the bureaus can't prove a variety of things in a certain time frame, then by law they have to remove it. And generally they they don't they're not able to verify the specific things of information in that time frame, So they legally have to get it removed. That's wild. I feel like someone's sitting on a multi-million, multi-hundred million dollar company here, right here, just by getting people's credit card debt removed or student loan debt. But I guess then again, it costs money to do that. So that's wild. I mean, I'm not necessarily advocating for that and neither is Jack, but <laughs> if you have debt, <clears throat> maybe something to look into. Um, that's wild. Okay. And so, so that's specifically why I'm such an advocate in business to use business credit because there's less risk. You know, we just talked about the scenario. That's clearly less risky than using your own money. And you can use your own money in long-term investments. Now you have more money working for you at the same time. And I obviously make you more money if both generate a return. Could I buy a house on a credit card? If possible, if your Amex spending power is high enough. Like if, I, a, if I bought a house for 80 grand, I mean, I don't know where I'd find a house for 80 grand in these markets, but like so what, what you would need to do is turn that credit into cash. So use a merchant processor. Actually, there's different sites that do it for you um, that can help you pull the cash out of the card. Um, but people do fix and flip real estate projects all the time. I'm actually, I'm invested in one right now. I had a $20,000 credit card, turned it into cash, use that cash to invest into a fix and flip real estate project. That's going to generate me a return in six months. I'll get that cash back. I'll do a second deal. And then, you know, I'll turn cash twice in that 12 month introductory period and make 36% on my money for with free money. With no, and it's not even your money. So let me, let me just do the math real quick. So $20,000 times 
times 36%. So I'm going to make 7.2 grand, which is uh, 36% on that $20,000 that I'm borrowing at 0% for essentially doing nothing. Um, there's a little bit of risk involved, obviously. That's just business in general, but you know, it's completely passive. This is like opening up, my, like my brain is like thinking of every opportunity where I'm like, man, if I had 20 grand there, 10 grand there, 30 grand, brrr, you know what I mean? That's right. Okay. That's pretty crazy. So I could put down, like if you wanted to do a, a, a flip project or honestly, like, I don't know what the payment is. Like, I imagine that if I spend a hundred grand on a credit card or 10 grand on a credit card, it's 0% interest, but I still make payments every month, right? Back yeah, on so the great, balance. So great question. You actually have to make payments that are 1% of your balance. And so it's, you know, it's not interest. It's 1% of your balance. So if you're spent, if you have 20 K on the card, you spend the full 20 K you have to pay $200, which is 1% of your balance every, every month. month. So, you know, pretty easy to pay $200 to float 20 K. Right. And it goes towards the balance, obviously. And you get all freaking points. It's basically, I mean, redeem the points the right way. And you've got a, your first few payments care, taken care of. Exactly. This is like, what's okay. What's the crazy or what's the coolest thing you've ever done on the credit card? Oh, uh, like the credits. Thing, okay, so, I mean, what I do with all of these credit cards, I have an Amazon fully automated e-commerce store that just did $500,000 in revenue last month. And so when I put all my credit cards together and use that for the inventory, you know, I think that's, that's pretty cool. And so that, that business and your actually, margins on that are like what, like 20% profit probably well, on the Amazon. It's actually relatively small, only about 7%. 7%. Or, okay. Um, I just started a Walmart automation company, um, very recently and with Walmart automation, there's 20 to 35% margins. And so I'm about to use all my credit for that. So let's pretend, let's pretend you average 10% profit, like take out. Right, so you make 500 grand revenue, you take home 10%, was that 50 grand, right? So you spend $450,000 a month. You're getting $450,000 a month in points, give or take. Exactly. And then turn them into cash, tons of cash back. Just by having no, the card and having the right cards. You could, if you just figured out a way to spend enough money, you could literally just live off of points. <laughs> you could, you could. I mean, honestly, that's, that's been Amazon automation for me. We spend so much money on the inventory and now it's Walmart automation. So now we have, I have multiple e-commerce stores right now pumping, you know, first of all, insane revenue and then, you know, pretty solid net profit as well. So I wonder if I could buy, e can I buy e-commerce stores? hundred percent. Yo, in my Walmart automation company, um, I build clients fully automated e-commerce stores that it's drop shipping model. And the only thing that the client needs to do is have the credit lines, pay the credit cards off once Walmart pays them every two weeks. And then we invoice them for our profit split, which is 50, 50. So we do all the work. We use their credit. It's What's their the upfront investment? 25K. So if I put 20, I could get a $25,000 loan on a credit card. Interest free. Hand you that. And if, let's say I, I, how fast is it going to take ballpark me here? Let's play out a scenario. This is just too much fun. Okay. Ballpark range. I have a 797 ish credit score, right? Give or take. I have pretty high. I mean, I have no balance, right? And I have pretty high spending power. I mean, I don't think there's a single credit card that has under a $10,000 limit. And my Amex is a charge card. It has probably close to a hundred grand. Okay. Ha right. So That's like, pretty good. right. It's, so it's I, the how much spending power? Good. Yeah, so the ROI question, right? The number one thing that determines that is the amount of credit someone has. So if someone starts a store with only $15,000 in credit, it takes a lot longer to scale their store, right? You know, $15,000 um, every month in sales, a little bit more than that. But if you have $100,000, you know, you can make so much more money in such a quicker time. So our ROI forecast is anywhere between like four and eight months for like, if you have a lot of credit, you know, someone like yourself in a really good position. But if you have the lower end, and it takes kind of a lot, a lot longer to, you know, get that money back. But hypothetically, if I had, and obviously I don't know what I'm doing in any way, shape or form, but if I had a hundred thousand dollar interest-free lines of credit over the course of four credit cards, 25,000 a pop, right? 12 month interest free. I hand one of them to you and I say, here's 25,000 charge at my card. And then I'm like, here's $75,000 in credit card 
interest-free money. Go. It's, Hypothetic, yeah. Hypothetically yeah. speaking, with none of my own money for no interest, I could buy an e-commerce store and scale that e-commerce store to where it would pay off like it would pay for itself because, I mean, you're bringing in, you know, you're using that $75,000, I imagine, for inventory and ads, right? Actually, no ads. The only thing you need to spend on is the inventory. And because Walmart is so brand new, there's less than 50,000 sellers compared to Amazon, which is 8 million. So Walmart's brand spanking new and we're cranking insane results. Like within the first 60 days of starting, some of our stores are doing $10,000 in net profit. In profit? And so forth. Yeah, net profit. And so for our clients, you know, we take half the net profit. Right, they right. Half, we take half, and it's completely passive. So in your scenario, you know, if you have the credit cards, you can start this business with none of your your own money out of pocket. You just use the credit. And no the only the only credit that I really have to worry about or worry about paying off is that initial twenty five thousand because the checks that I'm getting from Walmart are enough. To, like I'm paying, you know, like whatever it is, if I make $10 on a sale and $6 of it was for inventory, I still get the 10 bucks and I'm just putting that $6 towards the inventory, which was my, I paid for on a credit card anyway. So really the only money out of pocket or the only risk, I mean, I know there's more risk, but the only dollar risk that's involved is that 25,000 up front. And as long as my store makes $25,000 in profit by the end of the year, I essentially now have a store and hypothetically, in 12 months from right now, I could have a store that's making several thousand dollars a month in passive income, completely paid for for free with zero dollars out of my own pocket and no debt. 100%. You nailed it. And that's what we're doing right now for clients. We need to talk, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. And then, be, we're not done with the interview. I still got a couple more things, but where can people find out? Like, where do people go to? Buy yes. Stuff? So find me on Instagram. It's King of Debt. King of Debt is my handle on Instagram. Shoot me a DM. If you want to learn more about Walmart, DM me income and basically we'll just schedule a call, first introductory call, get to know you and see if you'd be a good fit. But you know, you need 25K and some good credit. And I also have a credit consulting company. So I actually coach all my clients on how to get approved for top cards with high limits. So um, you know, that's more beneficial for me and the client because the more limits they have, the higher we can scale their store, the more money they make, the more money we make. All right. I just followed you on Instagram. You better follow me back. Guys, King of Debt. We're going to link that down below. Um, dude, this was hands down one of the most informational uh, podcasts we've done, certainly in a while. Love it. Um, where does one, like, it? Like, I want to play the devil's advocate here just for a second. Like, it, when does one not do this stuff? Like, is there ever a time when you're like, utilizing these credits is not for you right now. I mean, if you're really bad with money management, then, you know, I, I mean, I think it's really comes down to, are you cut for business or not? Yeah. And I really think that's, it's just a resilience thing. Like yeah. in business, the more fail, like the, the most successful people, they have the most amount of failures. They've failed so many times and then became successful on one of their attempts. Right. So, um, you know, it's just, um, you got to find things that you believe in things that you think are going to create an ROI. And at that point, it's either your money or the business credit. We kind of talked about, you know, the pros and cons of each. So if you're interested in business, you know, I think this is the best route to take because there's less risk in this money than your personal savings. So it kind of just comes down to, you know, are you passionate about creating business, providing value through services and products, or are you not, you know, do you have the resilience to, try as hard as you can and fail multiple times and then, you know, be successful. Right. But you yeah. know, find those opportunities that you're certain in, or you have, you know, tons of confidence that you think you're going to turn an ROI in that short, short period of time. So you don't pay any interest at all. Mm. Yeah. And as long as you're spending the money on cash producing assets, you should be fine. Exactly. Like that. I think that's the biggest mistake that people will make. Right. They'd go out and they'd take, they'd put 50 grand on a card or something like that. And they would have spent it on like a mastermind and courses, like nothing is going to make them any money. Right. And then they end up and they're like, why did I make any money? It's like, cause you're an idiot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like in inventory, if you're buying inventory, that's cash producing, you sell the inventory, you make a profit ads, 
you're getting customers and leads into your business. You're making more sales. Like those are things you want to buy into a cash flow producing deal, an e-commerce store that's going to produce you cash flow. Like those are things, as long as you're investing in that, I was listening. Um, are you on clubhouse at all? No, dude, it's a freaking, I don't get it. I mean, it's, it's cool and it's exciting. Don't get me wrong. And everybody and their mom is on it right now. It's insane, but, uh, it's kind of annoying and complicated. Anyway, I was listening to, uh, Ty Lopez. There was a, a room the other day. It was Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone. It was like a bunch of like big, big hitters in there. And they were just talking about stuff. And Grant was like, the thing that you don't get is like, you think you understand money until you get in on a deal. And he goes, and then once you get in on a deal and once you realize, oh my gosh, I just paid 25 grand or a hundred grand or like whatever it was. And that money is literally just making more money for me. It's cash flowing. It's increased. He's like, once you understand that, he's like, that's how you, that's when you understand how people get filthy rich because it's like, okay, now all I got to do is go find money. Right. And as long as you can go find money, it doesn't have to be your own. It doesn't have to be anything because like you're, you don't make the money just by having money, you take the money and you let it go work for you. And the profit is not, oh man, I'm gonna sell it up here. It's like, no, you get cash flow off of it and it's appreciating and it's all this. And as long as you make just enough to make that payment, then you cash out, boom. Not only are you making cash flow, then you, you know, like there's so many different ways. And it's like, until you, until you get in that mindset, until you actually do a deal, you don't get, you don't understand the power of this. And I, I know there's a lot of people listening right now that are like, well, this sounds cool, but I'm never going to spend $50,000 on a credit card in a month. It's like, well, if you understood how money worked, like if you, if you got in on a deal, if you had an e-commerce business, if you had, had something to where you've got to spend money, this is literally game changing information. If you did not know it before, now you know it now. So I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing. Of course, Josh. Yeah, I think you pointed out great things. And by the way, I love your shirt, Cash Flow Empire. But yeah, finding yeah, the cash flows and then getting access to low interest capital and using that low interest capital into the thing that cash flows. So, I mean, that's when you, like you said, become incredibly wealthy. Do you have a course? I do, of course. And How so much is it? it? I kind of mentioned it was like a credit consulting company. I coach people on the credit. I get them approved for insane limits on top cards. It's um, it's a two month coaching program. It's thirty five hundred bucks. And we, we produce incredible results. And nice. a lot of people, once they go through the coaching program and get these top cards, they then step it up to a Walmart automation store. And so for the people oh, that sure. have, have the credit already, they go straight into the Walmart store. But the people that need the credit first, they do my coaching program. I help them get the cards and then they step up to the store. Like my mind is just racing, dude. Or I, I'm gonna we'll we'll get on a call for sure. I'm gonna I, we'll reach out to you. We'll chat soon in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure, and kind of get out a game plan because I got to do something. Like I've got I've got credit cards, I've got cash. I've, I was like, all right, let's let's do something with it here. Put it to use. So, exactly. Put it to use. I love it, dude. Dude, I appreciate you. One more time, King of Debt on Instagram. Yeah. King of Debt on Instagram. Shoot me a DM. I also have a free mini course. It's a mini course. The ten videos talks about the fundamentals of credit, how to build credit, how to get into business credit. If you want that access to the free course, DM me close friends on Instagram. And I'll get you that free access link. And okay. regardless, you can follow, engage with my stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And shoot me a DM and say what up. Love it. Love it. Guys, um, my disclaimer is that I have no idea who this guy is, but he seems legit. And uh, <laughs> uh, this is a really, really good conversation. I am not a credit expert. He is. Do your research. Be smart with your money. Don't take out loans if, unless you know what actually know what you're doing. Like, I, there's always that caveat. Like, I've studied. Like, one of my clients, actually, the the people that gave me this shirt. Like, I've they they have taught me about debt and money and investing in real estate. Now there's Jack. Like, get around it. Really understand what you're doing before you just go and dive in. And if you are actually really serious about it talk to someone like Jack. He's got stuff available. He's got resources. The, the cost, the cost risk analysis of trying to do something like this on your own versus the couple grand that it's going to cost you to get with someone that actually knows what they're doing. Like the risk of trying to do it on your own and potentially making a mistake versus paying a couple thousand. It's like an insurance policy, right? A couple thousand dollars of actually making sure it's doing right. It's always worth it. So Jack, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, any last words for the people? Build your credit. Start today. Get access to low interest money and put that money to work. Yeah, don't listen to Dave Ramsey, guys. Dave Ramsey's going to keep you broke. No, I'm just kidding. Dave Ramsey's good yeah, for certain type of people. Friend. Put it to work. All right. Jack, thanks so much, guys. As always, hustle, hustle. God bless. Do not be afraid to think different because those of us that think different are going to be the ones that change the world. I love you all, and I will see you on the next episode. Take it easy, fam. Peace.